do on it just by myself. Um, all right, so now we're recording, but uh, we have re-enrollment supposed to go out this Friday. Okay, that's the plan. We'll send it out, and basically we'll give everybody two weeks to uh, complete the re-enrollment for their students who are returning. Uh, last year, we had what uh, the retention rate was somewhere around 95, 96%, um, which was amazing, and so um, we look forward to a similar similar retention for next year. The, the importance of the re-enrollment for you all to get the information back to us by the 1st of February um, is so that we can then begin to admit new students, um, students who have applied for various grade levels, um, like K or two, one through eight, um, to see what kind of room we have. So it's really important that we get the re-enrollment back as soon as we can um, within that window. Um, if there's any questions or concerns about the timing of that or 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 the payments for those things, by all means, email me or Ann Lee Bassessi and we can work out uh, a, a better time frame. But just knowing that you're coming is, is super important. Um, so we're going to actually do a couple of screenings, and those are for the real little ones, the JK. Um, and we also screen the, those who are in the other grade levels. But right now we have a, a large applicant pool for JK and K. So we'll start those screenings. Um, coming up here in January and February. Um, we have an open house that's happening uh, to kick off Catholic Schools Week. Um, on the Saturday, we'll have uh, chili cook-off, Sunday, Catholic Schools Week Mass, and we'll have our open house here at school, and then we have Catholic Schools Week. So we're looking forward to the, the 10.30 and 12.30 open house. If you guys have uh, friends or family who may be looking for another school or have been talking about it, Point them in this direction for the 30th. It's a great day to come and check out the school and get a tour, walk the halls, check out the classrooms. So looking forward to that. Um, and then we will send out the enrollment contracts in February. And that'll be for those folks who um, pretty much uh, who will be joining us uh, going forward. All right. A couple of other items here to speak of. We have performance series test that's been going on. Um, we did it last week. This has been... Um, since now that we have so many devices in our school, basically we are, um, as, as the term goes, one-to-one. -one. So basically there's one device for every student for the most part. Um, not used like that constantly, but it's available. Um, because of this, we're able to get our testing done quickly. It used to take three weeks, maybe even four, if you count makeups, three to four weeks to get all of our performance series testing done. Now we have it done in two weeks. Basically it's done in like two or three days. So last week, middle school took care of theirs in one day. Uh, this week, uh, we'll wrap up the uh, elementary school. So it's wonderful to have that have that opportunity to sort of not impact our instruction nearly as much as it used to. All right, looking at the uh, um, <clears throat> end of the marking period, that is coming up on Friday. Um, so that marks two important things. One is the end of the nine weeks. So for those of you um, who maybe uh, have some outstanding assignments or work that has to get done. Those should be done uh, before the end of this week. But of course, you can speak with your teachers and make arrangements to make sure that, especially if you're impacted by an extended absence um, of illness or something, um, they can work with you to make sure that those, those assignments can be turned in later. Um, but also, the other important part is we're out at 1130. It's a true half day. We're out 1130 on Friday. So spread the word. Um, tell your carpool, tell your cul-de-sac, tell whomever you see, let them know that we're out of here at 11.30 on Friday. Um, and then, of course, we have MLK Day being observed on Monday. So um, this weekend is a longer weekend. So uh, we had a long one last week, plus the break, and now we have another um, three-and-a-half-day weekend coming up. Report cards for the second nine weeks, first semester grades, will be mailed out via email January 21st. All right, we've got a few things going on here in winter sports. Um, one is we've got basketball season is well underway. Uh, it's going well. Uh, I practice every day after school. I hear it in the hallways, down the hallway. So that's going on. But then we also have um, some skills sessions for third and fourth grade this week. So um, boys will be on Thursday. And then because of the half day, we're going to have to do uh, the girls will start next week. Um, for those of you who are looking at our IB school, the middle school, so mostly fifth grade parents, um, 
you were emailed a uh, everybody's emailed, but particularly fifth grade were emailed the um, a basically a slideshow, a slideshow that talks about our IB uh, program here at St. Mary's. And um, next week on uh, Tuesday the 18th, Mrs. Forky and Mrs. Jordan will hold a Q&A basically. So if you've reviewed it, you've seen it, and you want to have some questions that you may want need to have answered, there'll be a virtual question and answer. Um, so we, we welcome all of those people who maybe have questions about um, our middle school program uh, to go ahead and join that call. And that email, um, I believe it will be sent out with the link Oh, no, it's in, the, it's in the link. It's actually in the slideshow. Forgive me. Um, the link is in the slideshow, um, but you can look for that. We'll be sending more, con more communication about that going forward. All right. We got some more events coming up. PTO was rolling all fall, uh, last fall in 2021, and it won't change going forward. Uh, so next Friday, this is super important for everybody. Um, there's a quick turnaround on this. Next Friday... Um, is Chick-fil-A day here at St. Mary's. So on Friday, instead of pizza, Chick-fil-A will be available. Uh, this will be done twice this year. So we've got this one coming up and then another one on, in the near future. Um, it's super exciting for the kids. They love Chick-fil-A. Um, so you should have an email early this morning. It was around 6.37 ish this morning. You should have received an email and the order should be in by Friday. So you want to get your orders in for Chick-fil-A on for Friday. That's next Friday. So this Friday is the deadline to order. Next Friday is when the students dine on Chick-fil-A. Um, I already mentioned chili cook-off. Um, we need uh, some people to be tasters to come and taste. And if you want to volunteer, there's a uh, on our web page, you go to the parents tab and see the PTO tab. And there you can help volunteer uh, to make the chili cook-off a success. It's a great time and a great tasting time as well. So, uh, And then Catholic Schools Week is coming up. Um, and we're looking forward. We've got a great week planned for everybody. Um, this uh, We've formed a committee, and there's different levels of participation for the committee, and I'm super excited to see how this year's Catholic Schools Week pans out. And then here is the, the, the COVID cases. Uh, it's interesting to me. You look at 17 cases. That means 17 positive COVID cases, and then 16 others who we're in close contact and needed to quarantine. Um, as you may have may guess, this, this has become complicated in many ways. Um, the reason why it's complicated is because now we're con in consideration with, uh, are they vaccinated? Um, that determines your quarantine period. Um, are they eligible for a booster? Are they boosted? Um, uh, let me see, the, the five day window, are they symptomatic? Are they not symptomatic? When did the symptoms begin? Whether no symptoms was when they tested positive. So there's a whole lot of things that go into this. And our, our nurse, the clinic nurses have done a phenomenal job of, um, of contact tracing and reporting and listening and responding. Um, and um, we're really working hard to sort of, just sort of take care of our kids as best we can. Um, the most important thing, I believe, as it relates to this principal's coffee, is for parents to know that if they are made aware that they were in close contact, and that means like an official phone call from somebody, or they know they were in a carpool with somebody, um, or if they tested positive, please email me and the clinic. And then from there, we get back with you, and then we figure out the contact tracing from there. Um, that's super important that you contact us, me, and the clinic. Um, it helps us to sort of um, divide and conquer and what we're doing. And, um, and that's just basically the, the process and how it goes. Um, it's interesting too, um, you know, all, these cases, these are, not, these are not spread in school. This case, like the 17 you're looking at, they are not school cases. They are pre-existing. They happened over break, and, and here we are. So, um, uh, so uh, we, we are continuing to go forward. We've made some adjustments in terms of the seating at lunches, the recording of who's sitting next to whom, uh, the snack time. Uh, we try to get outside when we can. You know, it's 30 some degrees today, so it's not as inviting to get out there, but um, we go out for recess, et cetera, as much as we can. So, um, so we feel good about it um, and what we're doing. And as, as we all here know, uh, it sounds like uh, this wave will be short-lived. We're hoping not that COVID's going away, but this sort of 
this intense impact and, and um, spread of the virus will hopefully not nearly be as as much going forward. So, all right. Um, any sort of questions that I can maybe answer for anybody, I'm happy to field, particularly as it relates to the items we discussed today. Um, Mr. Hess, this is Lyle yes. across. Hopefully you can hear me all right. I've got a little construction going on in the background. Right. I can hear um, you. But uh, as you said, I know that y'all have adjusted the morning period, like before school starts where the kids are in the gym, where they previously were able to chat for a while and all that. And now I think they are not, is that correct? Well, we've spread them out. They can, they can right. chat and they have, they have to wear their mask, but we've spread them a bit. Yeah. 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 Which I totally support, but. I was wondering, um, in the interest of kind of keeping up their social skills, if uh, we could offer an alternative of being outside during that period of time, maybe on the playground or something, and then come in when the school day is ready to start, just so they could kind of have a little more of a normal um, morning. Yeah, that that concept has been explored, um, and it and it makes more sense on, on warmer days. Um, yeah. Then on 17 degree more drop off days, um, <laughs> but also logistically, there's uh, physically it's kind of difficult. I don't, I don't know. They're not they're not seated in silence. I'll go I'll go pay more attention to it this week and take a look at it. But they are able to chat and they are in 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 talking distance with one another. Um, so, but I hear you and I think that we can. I'll discuss it today this afternoon. I meet with a group of teacher leaders, and so mm -hmm. um, I'll bring that up today and see what they think on that. So. Yeah, and I mean, I absolutely support everything you're doing to contain um, so that we can have a normal school year. Um, but if there was a way to do that, I would greatly appreciate it because the, um, you know, the joy is from the connecting. So thank you. Right. So the other, the other on the flip side of that too, for those people who are like um, hearing that kids are gathered in the gym before school, if that's a concern, then drop your child off after 7.45. So um, that's the other way to sort of avoid that moment. They're not jam-packed in the gym. There's plenty of space. Um, but um, that's, uh, I'm making a note, Ms. LaCroix, so thank you very much. All right, anybody else have something they'd like to share or ask? I can try to provide clarity on. Good morning, Brandon. Um, this is Christina. I know that there was talk of possibly having um, the drop-in option for after-school care come back. And I looked through my Friday flashes, so if I missed it, then I missed it. But um, did I miss something? No, not yet. Um, you okay. didn't. Um, and we actually hired, um, we've just hired, uh, let's see, another individual yesterday. And so okay. I am meeting with the director this week and we're looking at our numbers and seeing how we can make that happen. So yes, we are actively working. I'm expecting within the week to be able to let you all know if it can or cannot happen. We have a list of people who want um, part-time regular that we're gonna okay. try and bring those in first. Then otherwise they're saying, I need Tuesday and Thursday, every Tuesday, Thursday. So we right. know staffing wise, we're gonna have those. Um, and, uh, but yes, within the week or so, you should hear back. So thank you for bringing that up, and I will okay. let you know. Awesome. Thanks. You being the collective you, not just you, Christina. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and if I wanted to get myself added to that regular um, list, is there who should I contact? Uh, so that would be our after-school care director, um, Melissa Martinez. So okay. it's M M Martinez at stmary.org. And you can copy yep. me and yep. awesome. Okay. Thank you. You betcha. That's a great question. Thank you. Anybody else?
So um, we left here in such a great shape in terms of COVID. Um, and then as you all are well aware of a break, you know, everybody's life was impacted. I don't know anyone who wasn't um, friend, family, neighbor, or whomever, coworker. Um, so, um, so of course we, when we came back, it's a whole different feel, whole different vibe. Um, but I will tell you, I think that sometimes the hardship that that causes creates a better perspective on what we're dealing with. And I think the resiliency that we show in um, really doing everything we can to make it right, um, I think is, is super important. I got an email asking, how can my child avoid being quarantined? Um, they didn't, they didn't want their child to be quarantined. And I, my answer were for three things. So if you're fully vaccinated um, and you're exposed, you can keep coming to school. And I, there are people on this call whom I know that's already been a case for. Um, so they were fully vaccinated kids. They were exposed because they were at lunch with their, with somebody. They came back the next day because that's, that's how it works. Um, um, so fully vaccinated as best you can. Um, wear your mask and then keep your distance. So if you can tell your kids, you know, if you feel like it's a close situation, then take a step back. Um, and that's, and that's helpful. So those are the main ways to do it. We do the best we can on our end to keep spacing. Um, but if you, if you're trying to keep your child from, if your concern is a quarantine situation, then those are the steps you can take. So. All right, guys, we've got a lot of exciting things happening. Re-enrollment, enrollment, recruiting of uh, uh, families. Um, again, our best marketing is the wor is, uh, word of mouth. So um, spread the word. Uh, we're in a good place. We have a great enrollment currently, um, but we can always, always have a, you know, a, a bank of individuals to pull from. So if you, if you happen to know folks who are interested or looking to change, send them our way and we're, we're happy to, to welcome them to St. Mary's, assuming they make the cut. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you so much. I hope you all have a wonderful day. And if you have any questions, by all means, send an email, give us a call, and we'll answer the questions. Take care. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, Brandon. Have a good day. Will do.